Morning, Papa. Good morning, Sir. How are you? Good, good. Molweni, welcome to Ivy's Kitchen. Hearty South African food made with love. You are welcome. I have my medium raja, my raja, my stocks, chutney, salt, and my baked beans, including my grated carrots who'll be going into the chakalaka. Seven colors, I know them from my grandmother, so it's like the after church meals. We'll have your pumpkin, your cabbage, your spinach, your beetroots, and chakalaka. I guess it was there, but it was not that popular. Basically, my food that I prepare in the kitchen, it's more like seven colors. I always encourage people to come and have those seven colors at Ives Kitchen. So, putting in my carrots, my raja spice, curry spice, just one tube of stock, half a spoon of salt okay as you can see everything's starting to mix in together and the color is changing the next thing that i'll be doing to my chakalaka now is to add my fruit chutney i've been using it in the chakalaka instead of tomatoes because it gives the chakalaka that rich texture you know there's that taste you you feel the love so i'll just put three full spoons of fruit chutney then mix everything my baked beans are going next Three big spoons. Chakalaka, it's, it's a South African salad. I'll call it a salad. Some people, they say there's no braai without pap and chakalaka. On my side, I say there's no uh, seven colors without chakalaka. So it has to be there always. Now the chakalaka, it's ready. It looks beautiful. It's ready to be served. It's ready to be on that plate and go into someone's tummy. All right, this is our beef. We already cooked some beef, but we just wanted to showcase the size of the beef stew that we make. This is uh, the beef stew and it's A grade. We don't cook it for long. We just boil it for like uh, 30 to 45 minutes and after that we roast it. And then I'll show you the whole process, how everything we're doing. I'll drain out the water that has salt already and the flavor of beef on the side. Now we're taking out the gravy. It's not even water, it's a gravy from the beef. We keep it for the later use. Now we'll be opening our pot. I know it might be weird how I make my beef, but this is the best beef ever, I'm telling you. Our ingredients on the beef, we had salt that boiled with the beef. Now we're going to put two tubes of beef stock. Those are the only two ingredients that we put in the beef. And then the rest, while it uh, roasts, we we'll put our fresh tomatoes in it to give it that flavor and the color. Yummy. So now we have two beef stock tubes. It goes in into our beef. Remember, we've taken out the gravy. Crush our beef top so that they can be all over the meat and then we just mix everything together. We'll let it sit, it will roast and then we just keep on stirring, stirring and then when it gets to that, when it gives you that brownish color, then add in your tomatoes. They do the magic. Oh, we forgot, we put a pinch of love. When I grew up, we never made our pub like this. But the reason of making the pub like this is because I'm trying to avoid to have the lumps in the pub. Okay, maize meal mixed with water into the boiled water starting to get the thick texture. Then just have to make sure that there are no lumps in it. What we're going to do next is put our tomatoes. They go over into our beef. And then we mix everything. So now we'll be going back to our pup. Remember we had to let our pup to simmer, you know, to, or to boil for about 10, five to 10 minutes. You can even see the way how it changes while I'm stirring. So now we'll close it so that it can simmer. It won't, it's not gonna take long to cook. It's just about five or 10 minutes. We'll stay twice and then it's cooked. There's that smell that you get from the pub when it's cooked. You start smelling the maize meal being cooked away. So now we're going to stir the pub now and then we close it again and then open it again last time and then it's cooked. Mussels are made from pap. <laughs> so the free range eat chicken, uh, we call it umlekwa. So umlekwa is a chicken that I grew up knowing that, you know, your grandfather or your grandmom will have the chicken in the yard. So whenever you have to eat chicken, you don't go to the shop, you just take it from the yard. You slaughter the chicken and we eat, it tastes delicious. So that was one of the food, you know, African food and something that we thought we should introduce at Ivy's Kitchen as part of the African or South African meals, umlekwa. 
So now we put our salt so that they can, um, you know, cook with umlekwa. And then that's what we put only for now. And then when we see it like it looks uh, nice and tender, not too soft, then we'll take out the gravy and roast it a bit, giving that color, brownish, you know, that appetizing color. And then we put back our gravy in it and we let it simmer with a pot lid open so that the gravy can be nice, smooth, and la 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 la. All right, now we're preparing our tribe. Uh, it's a sheep tribe. It is very important to wash it. It needs thoroughly washing because it has sand and you need to make sure that you don't save food when the customer, they take a bite. The face doesn't look nice, it's like they've eaten lemons. So you need to make sure that you clean it. It, it needs time, it needs patience. So now our tribe is almost ready. It's about to go into the pot and we're going to boil it. But this is our life in the kitchen. We don't, we don't just do this, we do this every day. <laughs> This is some of our nice meals at Ivy's Kitchen. Beef and pap, that is inyama yengomo, nepapa, ulusu, and isonga samanzi, that is fried and steamed bread. Umnusho and yimlekwa, that is hard body chicken and semp and beans. Thank you so much for cooking with Ivy's Kitchen. Until next time.